So how does a high-end photography smartphone camera compare to a professional 33 megapixel camera? I went and photographed an entire wedding just on the Xperia Pro I with its three different cameras, and I was pretty surprised at how it went. So full disclosure, uh, I've done a little bit of stuff on and off with Sony recently. And when I was talking to one of my contacts there, they had mentioned just like, hey, is there anything you want to do with the Xperia line? And so I thought, you know, like I've always wanted to go and photograph a wedding just on a smartphone. So while this video is definitely not sponsored or paid or being reviewed by Sony and Xperia in any way, they did send this over to me on loan to use for this project. So a I guess big thank you to them for letting me play with something I wouldn't normally have access to. Personally, I feel like they set it up more almost like a camera than a phone. While it's definitely in a phone body, you have a little button up here that as soon as you press it, it works like a shutter button. And the nice thing as well is you press the button and it automatically brings up the camera app. The camera app is by far the best camera that I've ever used on a smartphone. It has phase detect autofocus and touch tracking, all of the manual exposure and just different things that a regular mirrorless camera like the Sony Alpha 7 IV does. This is using that same 20 megapixel sensor from the RX100 Mark 7, I believe. But what they're doing is using 12 megapixels of that 20 megapixel sensor. And out of here, you're actually getting a 12-bit RAW file that has a ton of color information. Now, the cameras that are on here are a 24 millimeter equivalent that has that one inch sensor. The one inch sensor isn't being fully utilized, but that being said, it is an, a legit camera sensor that they're putting in this phone. You're getting a 24 millimeter equivalent out of this, which is kind of a standard for any smartphone these days. Then you also get a 50 millimeter equivalent as well as a 16 millimeter equivalent. And for a wedding photographer, those are actually very, very useful focal lengths. That being said, the 24 millimeter sensor is the only one of the three that is that larger one inch sensor. So the quality out of that one in particular is going to be a lot higher because the overall pixel pitch and the pixel size on this is just a lot better considering it's a much larger sensor. It's also the first phone that I've ever used that has a dual aperture. So it actually has an F2 aperture and then an F4 aperture. So if I'm doing something like landscapes, I can actually stop down the phone's camera to uh, use an F4 aperture, or I can obviously use the F2 and get you know, as much light in as possible. If you like a 24 millimeter focal length, uh, this phone slash camera, I think I'm probably just gonna call it a camera from now on because it's basically how I used it and what it's clearly suited towards. Photo Pro very much mirrors what's going on in a regular Sony camera as far as tracking and just all of the different options. It basically looks like the same interface. As I'm holding it too, you can definitely tell that there is some sort of stabilization happening in these, which is uh, really helpful. The best part though is uh, I've used a lot of other apps in the past and um, just the basic apps that are, are made for this are better than the other apps that I've used. I literally just have it set up to have Lightroom, the Photo Pro app, the Cinema Pro app, and the Video Pro app. Now out of this, this model has a 512 gigabyte internal storage, but unlike our uh, iPhones, this also has the ability to insert a micro SD card. So um, in a more professional type setting, being able to write to other storage is pretty darn cool. The screen as well is actually a 4K OLED display. So while it's not a professional camera necessarily, it definitely has all of the professional tools that you would find in a regular mirrorless camera. And while many might be bummed that this is like only 12 megapixels, I do like that they went for a better image overall than trying to slam a bunch of megapixels in here. I'd much rather have a better, more sensitive pixel, uh, which is basically what's coming out of this thing. This also has a Zeiss Tessar t star 24 millimeter lens. They're actually using uh, glass a spherical elements in here as well. So clearly imaging uh, on here is coming to the forefront. The mind blowing thing here for me though, is that it has a, a, just that phase detect autofocus. I believe it covers, yeah, 90% of the display. 
315 autofocus points, 20 frames a second photos, and apparently does uh, 60 frames a second calculations in terms of autofocus. So all of those things sound great, but the images out of here are what's actually important. So let's check out the wedding that I photographed with this thing and see how it actually performs. Now I want to say a massive thank you to my friend Chelsea Abril. She was the lead photographer on this and I just kind of came along for the ride. So a massive thank you to her. She's an amazing photographer and I will put her stuff in the description down below. I'm thinking no, we're thinking it in a place, place. Do you really know? I am barely away. Can't keep the lights on. For what it is, for a one inch sensor that's being cropped in on, I do think that the images look really great. The color was great. Uh, high ISO did pretty well considering, but just the fact that I was able to actually change all of my settings from shutter speed to aperture to ISO to all of my different uh, autofocus modes, all of that stuff, I was pretty surprised at how well it went. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe if you aren't already. Thanks again to Sony and Xperia for sending this over for me to play with the last couple months. It's been super fun and I totally kind of understand where you're going with this thing. So thanks again and I will see you all on the next one.